Come on guys, you've heard it before. Just because it's tiny doesn't mean it's not perfectly capable of getting the job done. Welcome back to OG's Danger Show. Welcome back, Original Gangsters. Officer Greg out here with you with something kind of cool and pretty new. You've probably seen them on YouTube already the last couple of days. It's brand new to the market, but I managed to get my hands on the Smith & Wesson Shield Plus. Now, I've long been a fan of the Smith & Wesson Shield. It's an awesome little compact carry pistol. The first shield purchase I made was actually for Mrs. OG. We tested a million little compact 9 millimeters quite a few years ago. The shield came out in 2012 and it was a little underwhelming. I wasn't too interested in it at first. Mrs. OG tried out a million little nine millimeter subcompact pistols that we borrowed to narrow down which one would be best for her for carry to work, from work, and while at work. Also something big enough that she could protect the OG household when I was gone. Mrs. OG fell in love with the Smith & Wesson Shield. This was the first gen shield. It had a little safety on the side. I wasn't crazy about it, but at the time that's all we could get. I got my hands on that shield pretty quickly. She loved it, she trained with it, she did really, really well with it. Fast forward a few years, OG decided he needed his own shield. It was such a cool, compact little gun, very flat. It just felt right in my hands. I just love the feel of the shield and I love the way they look more than any of the other little compact pistols that have hit the market at that time or since. So OG went out and got himself the Smith & Wesson Shield in 40 caliber. Actually, a student in one of my CCW classes brought this to one of the classes. I tried it out, expecting it just to knock my arm off. It actually wasn't so bad. It's got a stout little kick to it. However, I kind of liked it. So I went out and bought so one. Actually, this is the 40 caliber shield that I carry with me on duty as a backup gun. And I also carry it uh, under a jacket anytime I'm uh, headed to court and need a little bit slimmer profile firearm. Fast forward a couple more years. OG's oldest daughter is going off to college. I had her try all of the nine millimeter pistols in the OG household. And you might've seen a lot of those pistols in a recent video. She went through all those pistols and she decided, nope, she likes mom's shield nine millimeter. So I went out and got her her own. That daughter went off to college with that shield in her possession. And a couple years later, the youngest OG daughter decides to go off to college in a different location. And I wanted her set up too. Both of my daughters have been shooting since they were little kids in the 4-H program that uh, they wrangled me into. So they know how to operate a pistol pretty well. I took the youngest daughter to an indoor range with every 9mm pistol I own, from big ones down to tiny ones. And once again, I allowed her to choose any of those 9mm pistols to take with her to college. Once again, the youngest one settled on mom's 9mm shield. So she actually inherited mom's 9mm shield, and I went out and got mom the 2.0, which had just come out. Short story long, all of the females in the OG household are rocking 9mm shields. So a couple of years ago, OG decided he needed his own 9mm shield too. I actually was going out to look for a 9mm conversion barrel for my 40, but my 40 mostly lives at work and, and performs its job at work. So I wanted a 9mm for off-duty. So OG comes up with his own shield 2.0 9mm. And of course this one I had to dress up with a little crimson trace flashlight and laser, mostly pointless. And I wanted a little bit higher capacity, so I put on some Hive base plates to give these shields a 10 round capacity. This shield happens to be carried in a tier one concealed Aegis, I believe. Segmented holster here inside the waistband, carries a spare magazine up front, right where your hands need to be during a fight. 
I was once a proud owner of a Springfield XDS in 45. I liked that little dinky compact gun. However, my dainty piano playing fingers didn't always activate the little grip safety on that pistol. So I quickly sold that thing and ended up with what? A 45 caliber shield. If you haven't seen my review on the 45 caliber shield, I'll put a, a little card right up here. You can go check out that video. All right, so I think we've established that OG is a big fan of the Smith & Wesson shield. It's trendy these days to like all of the high-end guns, Sig Sauer, the Sig 365, CZ pistols, these fancy, fancy guns. I've always been a fan of Glocks, and I've always been a fan of Smith & Wessons. Oh, idiot. The only problem with the Smith & Wesson shield in any of its configurations, 9mm, 40, or 45, it's a low capacity pistol. The 9mm shield typically comes with a 7 round flush fitting magazine or an 8 round extended magazine. Now, 8 rounds and one in the pipe is 9 total rounds. Perfectly California compliant, but not all that great if you're going to be out and about and away from your ammo supply. That's why I, OG always recommends you carry a backup magazine with you. And that's why I like the tier one concealed holster because it always has a spare magazine right there in front of you ready to go. Those of you shield owners know what I'm talking about when I say that this little eight round magazine with its little adapter sleeve is kind of a pain in the ass. This sleeve is famous for sliding up the magazine at the wrong time. When you're trying to drag the magazine out of its holster or mag pouch, that little sleeve is always going to move around. There's been a couple of aftermarket fixes for that. But the overall problem with the shield has always been its low capacity. Many months later. Finally, the shield comes out with a decent capacity. 13 plus one rounds in a magazine that's, well, it looks a little different than the prior shield magazines. However, it fits in almost exactly the same size grip. This is a performance center model. I was talked into an upgrade. This performance little model has fiber optic rear sights in orange and a fiber optic kind of a greenish yellow front sight. In addition to the porting on the slide, there's a ported barrel in two little slots. Unfortunately, the version I got comes with a safety, but the safety is so stiff on these Smith & Wesson shields that you can run them in the down position and the thing's never going to come on. So otherwise, I prefer no safeties on my uh, defensive handguns, but that is not a deal breaker for me. Instead of the curved segmented trigger from the past pistols, They've included a trigger that is, like Tom Cruise, mostly straight. That's classified. You'll also notice that this trigger no longer is segmented in half. It actually comes with a, a little, well, I won't use the word in there, but you know what that thing's like. It's a little trigger safety that's very much like a Glock's trigger. There's also an over-travel stop built into the frame again, so when the trigger breaks, it can't go too far, and a beautiful little reset. Let's do this on camera for you dry here. You'll notice that this trigger, it's a two-stage trigger. The second stage is barely perceptible. We have a nice little take up. We reach a little bit of a wall there, and then we, with very little pressure, we break the sear on that pistol. That's a pretty cool feature. The pistol is now, uh, the slide is now recoiled, and you'll notice a very nice, very crisp reset right there. So, pistol's ready to fire again very easily. We're gonna fire some rounds over here at Max. Sorry, Max. And we got a couple steel targets downrange. Let's give it a go and see if we like it. That thing just doesn't run out of ammo, that's crazy. If you wanna look as ridiculously hot as the OG in this t-shirt, OG's Danger Show Covert Gear, go to the merch shelf down below this video, pick yourself up a hoodie or a t-shirt, face mask or gator, get yours. Okay, real quick. That Shield Plus, first of all, seemed to go on forever. It was shooting rounds forever, long after I thought that a shield should be empty. The trigger on that thing is crazy nice. Such a nice, easy, light breaking trigger. 
better than all the other factory triggers I own. Probably second only to like an Apex aftermarket trigger that you're gonna drop another 150 bucks on. So coming from the factory, that little mostly straight trigger is a pretty badass little addition. All right, 10 round magazine. All right, 10 rounds, here we go. Let's go for the two steel targets. Okay, we're loaded up 13 and one in the pistol. We're gonna run it out of the tier one concealed holster. And uh, I'm gonna try and make this work for now in the little magazine pouch just for carry purposes. We're gonna draw from concealment and work on Max and his two steel friends. Let's get to it. So one thing I'm noticing about this little fireball, having never owned a ported pistol before, there is quite a lot of uh, black carbon building up from this ported barrel. It's not a big deal, of course. The pistols ran just fine so far, 100% other than those magazine follower issues on uh, cheap ball ammo. But it is a dirty pistol after uh, a good range session, so this is something I got to keep in mind. Make sure I go back and clean this thing thoroughly if I plan on carrying it out on the street. For a couple of magazines now, it has failed to lock open on the last round, at least with this 115 grain cheap ball ammo. So we're going to watch that with the self-defense rounds and see if that continues. There it is. This is about the fourth magazine where it has not locked open on an empty mag. I've got a couple of Hornady critical defense in here, critical defenders, I don't even know. The little polymer tip rounds. We're gonna try them and see if they don't lock open the uh, magazine on this thing so we know if we got a problem. All right, Hornady critical defender. Yeah, that's what I kind of figured. Locked open the slide just fine. This, boys, is why you want to always go test your pistol, any new carry pistol, with the exact ammo that you plan on carrying on the street. Ideally, if you can find it these days, you want to run a couple of boxes through there. I know that's a little tough, but we don't just want to go to the range, run a couple of boxes of ball ammunition through our pistol, and consider it good to go for self-defense. I found that out here kind of in the opposite way. One thing I very much like on this, this extended magazine release is really, really nice. Sticks out quite a bit further. Actually, it doesn't even look like it when in comparison to the other shields. But it sticks out plenty far where I don't need to adjust my grip at all to release a magazine. With a standard firing grip, I can just reach over with my thumb, pop that magazine out, insert a new one. So I do like that. I guess a little bit extended. It sure doesn't feel like it, and it sure doesn't stick out to the point where it's a problem. If I didn't already mention, I should have. I have failed you miserably, but the magazine release is reversible. 
So it is only, it's not ambidextrous as it comes out of the box, but it is reversible, can be swapped to the other side for you uh, lefties who don't like puppies and hate Jesus. I know some people are getting really bent over the difference in frame color. I actually kind of like it. It makes it very easy for me to look down at my pile O shields and uh, determine which one is the new one. Not only does the trigger look different and the sights are different than my other ones, but this grayish color frame, it probably doesn't even show very well in this picture, but this grayish color frame is actually uh, kind of nice. I like it. Oh gee, that's too many shields, said no one ever. And remember, two of my shields are with two of the OG daughters right now. We got two more in the household. I do like the shields, folks. So overall, I really like this thing. I really don't think you need the Performance Center package. I do like it. I don't think you, the average consumer, needs to buy the Performance Center to get this kind of performance out of this pistol. The standard Shield Plus comes with a great flat face trigger. Comes with the same magazines. Doesn't come with those sights but you can put uh, any old sights on there you want to later on. You can put your favorite Ameriglows or Trigicons, whatever you like on your shield. I understand the trigger's probably been worked over a little bit by the Performance Center folks, but in my experience, the standard shields and the Performance Center shields, they're not really all that much different. And you're gonna really like the feel of this flat, or mostly flat, mostly straight. It's one of life's mysteries, sir. Trigger. Whew. All right, original gangsters, I appreciate you hanging out with me today. Today is day two with this pistol and it's getting a little warm out here so I'm going to wrap it up. I thank you guys for hanging out with me. Uh, I appreciate you stopping by and I really appreciate you giving this video a thumbs up. You giving this video a thumbs up helps push it to the front of the uh, stack here on YouTube and whether or not they like gun videos it pushes those videos to the front for the average viewer and uh, get, helps us get our second amendment and pro-gun message out to the uh, to the wider YouTube audience. So. Give me a thumbs up down there if you would. If you're not already a subscriber, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit the subscribe button and definitely hit that notification bell so that you'll uh, get, a, get notified whenever I have a new video come out, which isn't often. Pretty much once a week because I still have to work a full-time job. All right, you guys stay safe out there. Stay armed where you are legally allowed to do so. Until next time, OG out.